Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we will be discussing spoilers as usual, so here is your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And today we have a very special guest. My best friend Allie is here with us. Hello. Um, who went to Western with both Ashley and I. Mm-hmm. Woohoo! <laughs> I don't think we ever <laughs> crossed paths at any point, though. No, unfortunately, yeah. which, which <laughs> happens. There were a lot of us. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Alex and I only had one class together ever, I think. So, you know. Alex. Yeah, no. One time. Oh, yeah, yeah. One time. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, it's rare. <laughs> so, um, I don't know you, and neither do our listeners. <laughs> do you want to introduce um, yourself? Yeah, hi. So, yeah, I went to Western, and it was a good time. Um, I studied marine science, and so right now I'm actually living in Chile. I'm in this really tiny coastal town, and it's been really wonderful. Um, I've been there for the last 10 months, and I'm back in the States just for like a month and a half because I have a couple people in my life that are getting married, uh, which is super exciting. And, (laughs) yeah, that's kind of my most recent news. Um, What was your uh, major? I did, let's see, environmental science with a marine ecology emphasis. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was really cool. And it was nice because it's a really flexible major. So I got to kind of like straddle biology and environmental science and I got to take all the classes. It was really cool. (laughs) Yeah, so I liked it. That's cool. So So you're just... So sciences, uh... it took forever. (laughs) Yeah, it took me like five years. (laughs) It was bad. But, you know, I liked Bellingham, so it worked out. (laughs) Bellingham's I. Uh, so yes. are you just uh, in town visiting? or? Yeah, so right now um, we are at my aunt's house. We're in Tigard, Oregon. And mm, so I'm going to see the family. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, so you're actually like closer to me than ever right now, Alex. Yep. <laughs> you're down in my neck of the woods. Well, well since we started the podcast, at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, normally we're recording across state lines, but. Yeah, that's so cool. We are in my neighborhood. <laughs> Here we go. Well, cool. Well, uh, what have you been up to, Alex? Oh, my. So I just moved. Um, yeah. I have been living with my parents for the last three years after college, which is sad, but it's a reality that most people face. Yo. Um, so I just moved in <laughs> with my sister, and that's been great. I have a lot of a lot more room, and I'm excited. Yeah, that's cool. So that you've just been busy with that? Mostly that, yeah. I don't, I don't, <laughs> nothing, nothing new on the writing front still. Yeah, waiting, that's... Waiting for that next draft. Just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to? Uh, well, Sunday was William's birthday, and uh-huh. um, we went and did an escape room. Ooh, what was that? the theme? What was the theme? Oh, okay. First, I describe to Allie what that is. She's been <laughs> out of the country for escape. a year. I don't know what popular things are anymore. <laughs> That's so cool. Escape that rooms exciting. are so much fun. So we actually did one for his birthday last year as well. Uh, basically, it's like a big puzzle game. Like, it's always got like a theme. There's some kind of a story or something. But like, you go to a place and you're like locked in this room and you have to like find clues and solve puzzles in order to get out. Oh um, my goodness. <laughs> it's so much fun. So the one we did last year was Pirates. It was like you're locked in Blackbeard's brig and you have to escape. Uh, but this one was even better. So the conceit was uh, that there's this, it takes place 50 years after the death of Edgar Allan Poe. And there's oh. this author, I know, this is like big story <laughs> around this one. There's this author, she's very mysterious and reclusive, but she claims to be the reincarnation of Edgar Allan Poe. Oh. And it's, you know, she's sort of nearing the end of her life, and she has invited a group of reporters, the game players, to come and interview her in her home. But when you arrive, Ooh. you find that she is not there and you are locked in. Oh, <laughs> and it's oh really God. spooky and fun. It's all dark in there. They ha- they give you like lanterns, like old fashioned. St- I mean, they're actually electric, they're tiny. but they look like old they're timey tiny. like kerosene lamps. Oh, and wow. you so it's like all dark in there, and you have to like look around and find clues and like solve puzzles and read what? letters, and <laughs> it is so much fun. It and sounds we like won. A dream. Come back. And it's, we can go to one. Can we please? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's really fun. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> yeah, and and this one has a twenty two percent success rate, and we Whoa. beat it. And you Whoa. beat it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, that's it's so cool. So yeah, much fun. Yeah, How the the pirate one I did was at Van Mall. The, it's a relatively um, new sort of thing, I guess. Like last five years. Yeah, they really just sprung up like okay. last year. I haven't been gone that long. I don't even. Well, yeah, but still, that's so cool. Yeah, it's so 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 much fun. Yeah, the, this one that we did was in Salem. Um, and actually, they've got another one there that's like you're trying to like discover who a serial killer is. Um, that I'm trying to talk to my brother. I want my brother to do that for his birthday in October. So. Ooh, that would be so fun. <laughs> yeah, I love them. So yeah, that was pretty great. <laughs> yeah, that's like the best way to celebrate a birthday. Yeah, that, Ooh. Sure that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. But yeah, so that's that's the most sort of exciting thing that's happened to me. I got new glasses. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Actually, you're you know what? They're really cool today. though. Cause they have they it's like they're regular glasses, but they've got like a sunglasses that magnets onto the front. Oh yeah, oh, my dad has those. Are those. So yeah, cool. that's really I nice, love them. I have to wear I have to wear sunglasses <laughs> over my glasses. Mm-hmm. Oof, yeah. No, it's like the perfect solution for me i love it so much yeah but it's I'm, so I'm, much I'm, better <laughs> i just got them today and like it i'm going through that weird like vertigo phase where you have new glasses oh, you feel goodness. like the world looks all weird like you're a million yeah. feet tall and you're like ah my, my, pair, my pair before the, the pair that i have now um i got them at costco and they're like the big sort of like uh, the really big frames that look sort of like geeky and like mm-hmm. hipstery at the time. Yes. Yeah, um, if you guys want to see what his glasses look like, look at our logo. <laughs> those are the, There's those the, are one, the... the logo that has us, our faces on it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> those are those ones, I think. Uh, um, but um, when, when they first gave them to me, the lens was misaligned. Oh, no. <gasps> so I was like... I basically had vertigo for a week until oh, I fixed it. Terrible. It was it was so strange. <laughs> like I'm being pumped. Well, because because normal glasses you do take a little while to get used to, mm-hmm. but these I wasn't getting used to, and so I was like, "There's got to be something wrong." Yeah. yeah. Um, so luckily they fixed it though, but it it, it can be really disorienting at first. <laughs> it is really. It's terrifying. I was yeah, I just had a really random thought. That yeah. if we ever get like a sponsor, we should totally get like Warby Parker to sponsor. Well, Ooh. yeah, Warby Parker yes. sponsors everybody. Like every podcast I have ever <laughs> listened to is sponsored by Warby Parker. Right, and I have so, Warby Parker glasses on. So. Done. Well, there you go. Maybe Sunday we yeah. can dream. Maybe we'll Some, be one of those big fancy. Dream. Yeah, one of those right. big fancy podcasts sponsored by Nature Box and and <laughs> yeah. Hello Fresh and Squatty and... Potty. Squatty and... Potty. That would be prime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, Mod yeah. Cloth. And Mom, Mom. Pro Flowers, yes. all of those guys <laughs> sponsor everyone. Audible.com. Oh, Audible. We have no sponsors. We have no sponsors. We have no sponsors. <laughs> we have only enthusiasm. <laughs> That's all you need. It's the most important thing. Sponsorship would be nice, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it never hurts. It's four, never a bad thing. Four <laughs> consistent viewers would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we should get around to our topic. Uh, so those of you out there who may have listened to a previous episode, if if you have listened to a previous <laughs> maybe, episode, maybe. <laughs> uh, may have noticed our little sign off is no guilty pleasures. Uh and I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, so I want to kind of explain it. Uh, basically, our thesis is like, don't don't be embarrassed about what you like. Everything is worthwhile. There's merit to everything. Like, that's kind of our whole jam up here. That's why we're called Literary Merit. Uh, but we thought we should sort of air things out, especially since we spent our first episode, like, talking about stuff we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably sort of open our closets and show yeah. the world the embarrassing stuff that we're into because yeah. we don't think anybody should feel uncomfortable or ashamed about the things that they like, however nerdy or weird or trashy they might be. Yeah, mm-hmm. which I love that. I mean, that took well, me and, forever. And even, even, if, even if there's like a ton of negative stuff surrounding a show, like you can learn from it. Exactly. Yeah, there's always something problematic faves exactly Ooh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. you yeah. can be like okay 
But, I can still enjoy this, but, but I'm, why is I'm, it problematic? Why is it yeah, problematic? Exactly. exactly. Totally, totally. Well, um, where do you guys want to begin? Does anyone want to just chuck something out there? Just be I'm the first to take the plunge. <laughs> so, I have a weird love of like scientific reality shows. Which I fully support. One so, thousand percent. Oh, what, like ancient aliens or something? Like what are you talking about? That is about? definitely on my list. Ancient aliens, <laughs> as well as like river monsters on Animal Planet. Oh my! Um, and there's there's some really weird ones too. Like I think it's either History or some other really obscure scientific channel has like a hunting um, cryptids show mm-hmm. where he's, okay, like, wait, that sounds like something cryptids. I gotta get into. right. <laughs> And it's like so fake, and they like it's it's totally fake, but it's 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 basically like um, Laguna Beach of hunting Bigfoot. Oh, I need that in my life. <laughs> but, but, but with hillbillies, even better. It's like yes. Oh, I don't remember what that good. one's called, but yeah. but it, the, those exist and they're amazing. Oh. Um, but River Monsters is probably my biggest one. I don't know the guy who his name's in the title. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. But. Um, He's just, I don't know, British, and... It's like literally all you need in a TV <laughs> well, yeah, series. Some and he, British yeah. dude and he, river monsters die. And, and, and he just goes around the world and, like, follows up on rumors of these, like, fish or alligators or whatever live in fresh water, usually fresh water, um, that have, like, hurt or, like, bitten people or attacked people. And it's just him trying to catch it on a fishing rod. Oh. And it's really intense sometimes. <laughs> what? Just fishing for cryptids? <laughs> Basically, I mean, this one's a little more realistic because most of them aren't like mythical. Um, some of them they're do just have like, like there's something oh weird gosh. in the water. What is yeah, it? It's a big barracuda I mean, or something. Yeah, exactly. Some of some of them are um, more uh, mythical. Like I'm sure. I think he did. He probably did a Loch Ness one. I was gonna say he's like um, I'm catching you can't Nessie not. with a with a fishing rod. Like <laughs> with, <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with a net. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. But yeah, so so he, that that show I think it's uh, finished now. But I'm, you can they always play reruns. Um, it's just like good. I I've ever watched it. It's it's perfect for when you want something going on in the background while I you're guess. doing something else. Yes. Oh, that's my favorite kind of thing. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> that's what SpongeBob was for me in high school. Like, oh, I just man. play SpongeBob over and over. I try that and I just end up getting way too involved in it. You just watch it. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a few of the early season box sets of Spongebob, and I definitely watched those pretty religiously for a while. Same. I had the Ripped My Pants season. Which, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, the songs are so catchy. And I Spongebob may know so every cool. word to that song. Yes! It's so good! They got, like, a pro band to do it. It's like, oh. Yeah. You know? you I don't know. Maybe, do you think Spongebob would classify as a guilty pleasure? Totally. It definitely could. I, I have no shame. I, but, it's, but. <laughs> but it's just like, well, that's the thing that's really been hard for me coming up with a list for myself because it's been so long since I've felt any shame. Right, exactly. <laughs> I don't even know what a guilty pleasure is anymore. I know. I don't, like, I don't care anymore. Well, okay, no, I think I still have some few things. but And it's completely, <laughs> it's hard because it's up to yeah, every experience in your life and every person thinks that different things are embarrassing. So it's like, yeah. I, probably I just don't know what to even... But. I, I, yeah, I sort of like, looked at mine through like a cultural lens. Like, yes. Yeah. What do people look down upon generally? Yeah, something that you maybe like you love and you're not afraid to love, but like maybe you would be selective about who you would tell that you yeah. love. That thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I think what about about you, Allie? Oh, yeah. Ooh, like a good example. Ooh. Um, so this one's pretty recent. Um, I'm gonna switch over to the music world. Um, (laughs) for the longest time, I'm not even sure where it came from. Maybe it was just the fact that she had like her Disney channel show. And so I, I don't know, but I thought like, if I would be interested in Miley Cyrus, that was something to be embarrassed by. And so Mm. for the longest time, I just ignored everything. And then I heard, what was it? Can't be tamed, which is (laughs) still kind of, kind of an embarrassing thing, but I love that song. And then I got really into some of her stuff and then she's just so like outrageous I wasn't sure how I should feel about it and <laughs> but I don't know some of her songs are really catchy and like that For new sure. the new Harry Styles song like I didn't realize that it was his 
And I was sitting there listening to it and I thought I'd heard it before. And then we did that thing. I don't remember what the Shazam, like, Shazam, one of those things where you like, you know, you hold your phone up and it figures out the song and it was Harry Styles. Yeah. And I was like, no, like why? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's been a long time. Since well, I think really it, it can be really tough, uh, especially with uh, boy band members boy bands or, for sure. or Disney stars. Now that we're not like 12. Seeing <laughs> them grow up and really changing both in musically and politically. Like yeah. Miley has become super political. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, she has her yeah. um, Happy Hippie Foundation. Yeah. And she does a lot of uh, work with, I think it's a lot of stuff with... Uh, uh, LGBT homeless youth. Yeah, which is really cool. Yes, she. That's what. The, yeah, yeah. I, okay, I forget. Alex, have I told you about my my theory on Miley Cyrus and her whole like personality shift there? I don't think you have. Okay, because it's definitely a really nerdy thing that I have to tell you about. This is probably yeah. gonna be uh you know in a bonus episode or something because i don't know that this needs to stay in the episode proper but uh (laughs) i i i liken what she did there between because there was the vmas where she danced with robin thick and then the Uh, next year she had a homeless young man accept her award for her um and it it was like just this radical shift one year to the next Mm -hmm. and i liken it to shakespeare's henry the fourth part (laughs) one In which Prince Hal has had had this plan where he's just like a total like ne'er do well like jerk face guy, so that when he turns his act around and becomes a really great king, it's all the more impressive. I believe that Miley Cyrus was acting like a crazy head, so that when she went serious, people would be super impressed by her. <laughs> That's genius because it worked. <laughs> and, and, and it also completely yeah. distracts people from her Disney past. No, exactly, because it completely cuts her off from Hannah Montana. Yeah, like, she's, she's had like a, a metamorphosis. Oh, my yeah. God. So oh my she's, pull, she's pulling a Prince Hal there, I think. That's beautiful. <laughs> I like all, that. Almost, almost still remaining relevant and popular. Yeah. She's, she might be... I don't even know. Like Shakespeare. A genius. Yeah, she might be Shakespeare. Yeah, she I is believe Shakespeare it is. Shakespeare reincarnate. <laughs> you saw it here, folks. Saw it here first. <laughs> we called it. Does that, does that uh, mean uh, Liam Hemsworth is Anne Hathaway? Oh. The original Anne The original, Hathaway. yeah. <laughs> the original, yeah. Not like Liam Hemsworth. But no, Hathaway. I like that. Because they've got that sort of rocky, troubled relationship, and yeah, probably it's queer. not going to hold up. <laughs> Shakespeare was queer, Miley's queer. And I just really like thinking yeah. of Liam Hemsworth as Anne Hathaway. That's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> delightful. I think, it all, I think it all works out. I believe that it tracks. So we've done yeah, it. Yeah, I think the theory checks. Next episode will definitely be about conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, not a bad oh, idea. Let's put that one in the back pocket. Oh, that would be uh, fun. And then we can talk about ancient aliens uh, even more then. Oh, yes. There we go. <laughs> Just rip that one right open. That show is all about yeah. conspiracy theories. Yeah, no, I've got some good, like, serial killer conspiracy theories, so I'm all down for that Ooh. one. <laughs> Ready, done. Uh, I guess it's probably my turn. Uh, mm. So... Alex, you were saying how you were trying to sort of think of it from, like, an outside perspective. Like, what would other people think yeah. is weird about you? I went back and I started thinking about the stuff that I love still because I loved it as a kid, oh, which yeah. I can now see oh. is not of great quality, but I just <gasps> I just love it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I just the other day rewatched. Um did either of you watch the uh, 1998 Warner Brothers animated film Quest for Camelot? Oh, yeah. oh, Ashley. Oh, <laughs> man. That is one of my favorite movies, but when you show it to people who've never seen it, they hate it. It's not very good. I mean, it's great, but, but it's is. also bad. <laughs> I know. This is like my life struggle. Quest I mean, for Camelot. Like, oh okay, God. it's got Carrie Elwes. It's yeah, got... Right? Uh, Gary Oldman, like yeah, it's as the villain. It's like, what else do you need in a children's movie? You're done. <laughs> but Wait, I mean, is that I did just one of the ones by that one. Oh, actually, I think he was probably dead by then. Oh my gosh, there's 
Sorry. This is... Oh, no, it's not Bluth. It was okay. Warner Brothers. Okay, okay. And there's an under uh, Bocelli Celine Dion song in it. So, I mean, I, I feel like yeah, it was top yes, production the, quality. <laughs> the Prayer. I love that. The Prayer, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, Josh Groban the, did a version of that song. Oh, <laughs> the best way you. That's follow. another guilty pleasure of mine. There Just as a side note, that's Josh fair. Groban total guilty pleasure, one hundred percent guilty pleasure yeah, territory. That's great. <laughs> but no, I mean, because okay, so I watched it the other day. I rewatched Crush of the Camp. I it's not. I will not say it is the first time I've rewatched it since childhood. It is absolutely oh, no. not the first time I've yeah. rewatched it since childhood. <laughs> Excellent, good. But I did sit down with a somewhat critical eye the other day. I actually watched <laughs> it with my dad's girlfriend's ten year old daughter. Okay. And the funny thing is, I was like, okay, I love this movie. Like, the animation's not great, but I just still really like it. And I think the music's a lot of fun. And she watched it and she was like, I think the animation's really good. I think it's too. I actually do too. Yeah. It's very bold. I mean, I I love the art design in it, I love the character design in it. The actual animation is pretty poor quality like it's okay. really, yeah, really janky you're... sometimes yeah it almost lags a little bit and you're like wait <laughs> yeah it's laggy and weird and things change size it's not consistent like yeah. it's not it's not good quality animation but, but it's, it's just yeah, so it's charming consistent with warner brothers animation yeah <laughs> it's got i mean oh, and I the most it. hilariously fun late 90s pop music in it Garrett's yes. song "I Stand Alone." That's like oh, my so that's good. my jam. <laughs> it's so inspiring. I like sing it when I'm out in the woods by myself. I'm like, I can do <laughs> this. <laughs> oh man, I found a kindred spirit. Oh yes, this is so great. <laughs> so no, weird. I love them. Wait, did you ever play the computer game? No, there was a computer game. <laughs> yeah, oh. it's so good. It was, I can't, I think it was called like Dragon Games or something. Oh, wow. Um, it was just a bunch of mini games, but the best one was like you raise a dragon from an egg. <gasps> and it's like, it's like as the dragon like ages up, you'll have to like give it different things to care for it. And it like, you'd be, just keep up with, it. it's so fun. Like, oh, that's I played so, like, it fun. so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, love I had, that. I had the like Barbie dolls of those characters. I loved that movie so much as oh, a child. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Do you guys have any other things like that you just love because you loved them when you were a kid? Oh yeah, prime example is the movie Labyrinth. Um and honestly Wait, anything. Wait, but that one's Jim actually Henson. good though. That okay, one's actually you. good though. Thank you. But like it's hard unless you find people who I don't know. I I would consider myself fairly odd, so I I feel like I can say this. But you know, if unless you find weird people when they watch it with you currently and they didn't see it as a child, they hate it. They're like why are David pa- David Bowie's pants so tight? And like, because he's what David Bowie, puppets? and that's what everyone wants. Thank you. <laughs> that's what I always say. And they're just Nobody like, nobody doesn't so want that. <laughs> even if you think you don't, even if you say you don't, you're you really do. You do. <laughs> you're just lying. <laughs> exactly. And why lie? That's something everyone can appreciate somewhere in their oh heart. Oh my god, I know! <laughs> and then there's like little baby, um, what's her face? Um, Jennifer... Uh, oh, Connelly. Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer Connelly, and she's so she's, cute! She's like 15! She's so cute. And she's uh, really bad, but she's yeah. so very cute. Yeah, she's, so I would say she's probably the worst part of the movie, and it's not necessarily like her acting either. No, it's kind of the character. Her piss poor attitude. Her piss poor attitude. <laughs> yeah, she she had the deck stacked against her. That's how yeah, I remember for sure. she really did. Well, I mean, she, a baby she was mad at. Yeah, was stolen, so she has to go rescue it. Yeah, like, and she's oh, whining. What can we do? <laughs> and she's just an angsty teenager, which nobody likes to listen to them when they're you know having their little bouts. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> It's not fair. Exactly. Yeah. Nothing's fair. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Stop with the David Bowie impressions. <laughs> but yes, exactly. Alex? That one. Uh, what? Any any childhood things for you, Alex? Oh, I I didn't write any down. Um, oh, there must be some because I'm thinking of like all the Don Bluth movies. Yeah, but again, like, I feel like those are actually legitimately good. Like, maybe it's something that's like, yeah, I'm a grown-up who likes cartoons. Yo, me, number one. (laughs) But, like, they're of quality, you know? Like, I I feel like... If you rewatch Fern Gully... Okay, yeah, no, but that one's not Bluth, though. Well, but it's the same time period. Oh, it's so... Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just... Tim Curry. 
Robin Robin Williams rapping. I mean, <laughs> the, the songs are you the know, only saving grace of that movie because really it's kind of really bad. And it's I didn't ever yeah. see that movie as a kid. Like I saw it for the first time a couple of years ago, which is really? crazy. But the thing and is, then you were probably Toxic Love. Of, right? Oh, it's the best song ever. Well, written. It's it is. The though. thing is, though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that song makes me super uncomfortable. <laughs> no, no, I know. Horrible. I've had this conversation it's... with so many people. Like, I think oh. it's just Tim Curry. He's like a little too. Yeah, no, he's too know, much. He's too much Tim Curry. Not good for a kid's it movie. doesn't no. feel right. It's like, this yeah. is a children's movie, Tim. You're not supposed to <laughs> do that. But the production that. of that song is really great. Yeah. With, like the horns and. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a, it's a really great sequence, but it, it like, I can't. It makes me really uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> oh, no, oh, that's yeah. so funny. Yeah, I've met like, a lot of I people who said that same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Oh I can't. But no, I'm. I got it. I'm very. I'm. I'm very well versed in who made what animated film. Like I'm a really big nerd about that. No, that's I'm wonderful. Like, I have no that. idea. You guys were like bluff, and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, See, no, I, like, I know some yeah, of them, but I always forget. Like. Yeah, the cutoffs and... Don Bluth, he made, like, Land Before Time and All oh. Dogs Go to Heaven. Um, his last film oh. was Titan A.E. Um, I, don't know <gasps> I love that, that, that movie! That's yeah, he did Sound of I have it on DVD. I have it on VHS. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh good. Good. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you both. Um, you know, he did Anastasia. <laughs> Nobody knows that he did Anastasia. Oh, Anastasia. He did Anastasia. He did Ra- or Secret yeah. of the Oh, Secret of Nim, uh, Pebble and the Penguin. Oh. Yeah, he did a lot of really good ones. I don't know. Um, also, not Don Bluth, but Penguin related. Scare yeah. or the Penguin. What? Scare the penguin? You've lost me. Oh, I'm looking. <laughs> You've lost us both. I went to. <laughs> I was in. Um, what's it called? Daycare. And it was wholesome. <laughs> I, I, so. <laughs> So I Dick was in a, a, um, a private Christian school until second grade. <gasps> oh, I totally watched this movie. It's um I remember this. Oh my gosh. It's, okay. The whole I... thing's on YouTube. Everybody alert. The whole film, the... Scamper the Penguin, is on YouTube. Are we sure, though? Scamper. It's not like you get there and then it's like click to this website. Well, know. I don't want to use up all the internet just clicking it. Yeah, fair, fair. Okay. <laughs> Sidetrack. Okay, the like the box Soviet art Union, looks... Amazing. The box art looks familiar to me, but I don't right? think I've ever seen this movie. Okay, I did not know this, but apparently it's a Russian film that was dubbed in English. Oh. <laughs> that makes sense. It, it all looks makes sense. weird. Okay, it has its own TV tropes page, so it's legit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Japanese Soviet animated children's movie. Is that what it says? Yes. <laughs> From 1986. There you go. We got a yeah, got a niche uh, movie. That's it's a genre yeah. there. It's, it's really good though. It's really good. Wow. Delightful. Fantasy slash drama. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, oh my goodness! Some of these trope names: amazing Technicolor wildlife. Same. Sure. I mean, we've got like crowning. a pink penguin here. Yeah, yeah. Badass, adorable. Edutainment. <laughs> I Is love TV like tropes. <laughs> Food um, porn? What? Sure. <laughs> oh, they eat crackers at a certain scene. Oh my gosh. The food yeah. in animated well, that's... movies when I was a kid always made me so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think another sort of more um, recent guilty pleasure of mine that this one is a little harder to... This one's a little harder to admit. This is a little bit more legitimate of a guilty pleasure. <laughs> is uh, the TV show Once Upon a Time. Oh, oh my oh, goodness, oh, yeah. I watched that one for a while. It got a little... I, uh, yeah, I I, didn't finish, I but... stopped after the like Frozen business. I just feel like the, the show really crashed and burned right around there. That's, That's what I think. Yeah, I think they got new writers, and it was just written really, really poorly at that point, and so I sort of gave mm-hmm. up on it then. But up until then, I was pretty avid about that show. <laughs> okay, I mean, I honestly think it was really good <laughs> at first. I mean, yeah, I, I think I got to the second season, and it was a little too much for me, but I mean... I mean, uh, okay, so wait, you didn't even get to Captain Hook? Oh, I did, I did. Okay, so maybe... The I chemistry. The second one. Okay, so I must have finished the second. Yeah, him and Emma are all like... Mm-hmm. 
the chemistry uh. between Hook and Emma is off the charts. I don't understand. <laughs> like, I've never seen a TV romance oh. that real and true and believable. Oh, like, man. they're like, just together. It's man. like, yeah. damn. <laughs> it's, I mean, and it's uh. so funny because, like, their whole romance develops when, like, Balefire comes back and it's like, oh, her former love and is he gonna be... A... But then every time Hook is on screen, it's just like, no, get out the way, Balefire. Yeah. This is Hook's time. <laughs> like, get out of here. Yes. It's over. Oh. It's oh, over man. for you. But that, the, the Irish cop, though, that was, like, in season oh, one. Yeah. Oof. Well, yeah, because, yeah, he was, what, the um the huntsman. That's She's who he was. He was no, he was, um... No, the, he was the uh, huntsman the, from the, Red the Riding Hood. The huntsman. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Boom. And he is <laughs> Christian Grey now. I know! When I saw the trailer for that movie, I was like, I might actually watch it just because of him, and then <laughs> it did not go as I had hoped. Yeah. <laughs> well, he has his own show on Netflix as well. He does, yeah. I remember seeing his, his, his does? face on the cover. Yeah, it's a cop thriller. It's like Diet hmm. Animal. Diet Animal. <laughs> well, who needs that? Yeah, I like the the full fat version. <laughs> yeah, I prefer the full, yeah exactly the whole milk version. I don't want that skinny bun. Yeah, I want the real stuff. No. Give me all the calories in Hannibal. Exactly, please. It's a very appropriate metaphor, I think. I Actually, yeah. too appropriate. Maybe. <laughs> oh, that's. Hilarious. Hey, by the way, have you watched any more? Alex? No, I still haven't. Son, get on it. There's know, only three I seasons. Know, I know. There's I only, only three like seasons. Se- I only have the second half of the last season left, too. You know, Will is the same way. He, <laughs> I think you guys stopped at roughly the same point. Well, because like, that, that oh. midway season thing where it's like uh-huh. they, they tried to make basically two seasons out of one season. And the second so the half, half is the is better one, better. guys. Uh, the second gosh. half is the better one. <laughs> Gotta hold on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Back to guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I have so no guilt on One animal. total, total nice. random thing. Um, so, adults probably don't know what this is, but there's a video Us game children. called called Skylanders. What? Oh and... my god! <laughs> I just bought Will Skylanders Imaginators for his it's birthday. So <laughs> fucking okay. The game could be better, but the like you can create your own basically character out of pieces of these other like of toys. <laughs> Excuse me. It's amazing. <laughs> I have not the whole set, obviously. Oh but my. Basically, Skyland. I had been watching from afar of like gameplay videos of the first games that came out. And I didn't actually buy it until Imaginators came out. Because I was like, this is right up my alley. Oh, you man. Create your own, like, fighter, basically, to um, uh, action platforming through this game where you're, like, I mean, shooting it is a children's game. Oh. Like, it is it a is, children's game. so it's very game. simple. But, it, but <laughs> it's very reminiscent in gameplay of, like, Ratchet and Clank or oh. Jack and Daxter. Yeah, it's I mean, that's what's... Ref- I mean, yeah, believe it or not, Skylanders in its inception, was a Spyro game. So Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah like no, Spyro Will's been in on the, since the ground floor. <laughs> it, it's a heavy investment, though, because you have to buy the figures. It is oh, the wait. most ingenious thing. Yeah, it's like, oh, get... It's like, okay, if it was just downloadable characters that you had to pay money for, people would be like, microtransactions, get out of here with that. But because yeah. you're buying little toys, because they're because little toys... Everyone will buy it, and oh, they yeah. do, so and they the, did, the more, and they made all the money. The more characters there in Imaginators, they're senseis. The more senseis you get, the more powerful your own Imaginators will be. So your character <laughs> that you create gets more powerful the more toys you buy. Done. <laughs> you got me. It is the most ingenious yeah. freaking scheme ever. Like they're oh, yeah, they evil. They have evil. <laughs> If they were to release, like, an expansion, I'd be like, okay, how many figures do I need to buy? Yeah. And they kept going on sale at Target, too, so I was like, oh, three, oh, and for, that's not fair. three for two, I have to get three yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a waste not to. I mean. <laughs> Although I, I did um, think, I did I did sort of have the thought of, oh, I could just, because they, they scan even inside the box. Oh. So you don't have to open them. So I thought. Oh, you, can you dastardly them. fiend! I That's... didn't return them though. I'm not evil. Okay, I you. I should have, but I didn't. 
Your conscience won out. <laughs> and, and luckily, nobody listens to this podcast, and so nobody will... Re- nobody will know. Your secret dies just here. Wait. Just wait. You release it, and then you get, like, an email one day. Like, two, two weeks yeah. later, it was, like, a, a, an article. Sued by Sony. Yeah. <laughs> Sued, Sued by, by Sony, yes. We know, Alex. <laughs> and Target. Yeah. <laughs> it just snowballs. <laughs> Goodness so gracious. major major publicity for my book. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got a scandal, and then everyone's listening to our podcast. I think you should get sued by Sony. Yeah, Alex, wait a minute. For the team, you need to get sued by Sony. Let's make this happen. Uh, well, uh, speaking of video games, I think I've got a couple of video game guilty pleasures. I think the biggest one, though, is probably The Sims. Oh, Specifically The Sims yes. 3. I can't the Sims play the Sims. The best one. Cause like yeah, yeah. The Sims Four, the graphics were weird. Uh, and it was. We- it's two. all a hundred. I bought a new computer specifically. Like I was like, I need oh, a new no. computer. I know. I'll make sure to get the one that has the specs so I can play the Sims Four because that's coming out in a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I hate the Sims Four. It's the worst. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I the know. Sims Three, I've got like every expansion. Like I've logged. More hours than I care to know <laughs> playing that game. I oh, think my, I my longest, I once sat down, it was, you know, during, it was like just after college and I wasn't doing anything. And I sat down and I played The Sims for 10 straight hours. Ooh, yeah, that's probably, that sounds about right. <laughs> oh, I would play all can't. day. It's bad. You can't stop. No, you need addicting. all the things. You need all the stuff. <laughs> all the things. In our apartment, I... uh, sophomore year of college, Allie would just squat on the floor in front of our <laughs> coffee table, and yes. she would just like set up, and it would just uh-huh. be the same stay. No, and this is wherein wherein lies the guilt. I would not only be sitting there playing The Sims, but I would be multitasking and watching like bad chick flicks so i mean like he's just oh not that into God, you yes. and you know stuff like that so i'm watching a movie that i've seen a thousand times already that's not even that great and i'm playing the sims and i'm like oh it's bad i, <laughs> I can do that for our next subject yes i must say i must say like i'm so happy alex has brought us together because i feel like i'm talking to myself <laughs> yes i love this <laughs> I know when you said The Sims, I was like, yes, queen. <laughs> so true, though. I mean, it's it's hard because it's like you get so sucked into it and you don't think it's that weird. And then you go and talk to somebody and you're like, guess what I did today? And they're like, what? And you're like, I had three kids. One of them drowned in a pool and we made a cemetery in the backyard. And they're like, what is going on? <laughs> but you lose... You lose track of real time. Exactly. Like, you lose track of it. Like, yeah, if you can play long enough, you forget. Music. No, yeah, the, the shot. Oh my gosh, the music is the best part. I used I to have it on my phone. phone. It's like really relaxing. Oh, like, man, a friend of mine recently posted up The Sims 1 build music, and I was oh. like, <gasps> My childhood, like that was the dream. it's just such beautiful, peaceful piano music. I've never heard anything so calming in my life. It was right, incredible. and it's got the nostalgia attached to it. So you listen, and you're just everything's great. Everything's I'll, right. I'll just, you're eight years poll, old again. Like, like every like, <laughs> like every night, I'm in a YouTube poll. But somebody was like doing some sort of playthrough of The Sims Online. Oh, do you remember mm. that? Yeah, I remember when it came out, well, but I we didn't polar bear. We didn't have internet, so we like couldn't. I it was, uh, couldn't play it. I just didn't even so bother. I, I did not. I could not. It was very strange. I had it for a very brief amount of time. It was. Oh, it, I had a really bad computer, so it didn't work. But <laughs> it, it's very strange. Oh, my God. No, I've totally, like, lost, like, in multi-hour gaming sessions, like, I'll get into, like, Sims life mode, and then for a second I'll, like, think about my own life and be like, whoa. Like, <laughs> I, like my brain is in a totally different state right now. Yeah, like, you, you, like, I'm confused. in a different world. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, I had that promotion coming up, and then you're like, I have to clean the toilets, I have to, like, I know, and then you're like, oh, you're... right. Yeah, I have like, my oh. own real life job. Yeah, you're like, I don't have to do any of it. Is it called Tetris syndrome or something like that? 
Where as you're falling asleep at night, if you played a video game too long in the day, you dream about the the game. Oh, that, that's why I can't actually play Tetris, Tetris because yeah. when I did that, when I first <laughs> discovered it, I played for hours because it was so much fun, and then I would see the Tetris shapes no, on the ceiling and I couldn't an sleep. That's an actual yeah, thing. Yeah, it's terrible. It happens to me if I play a certain video game for like more than five. Oh hours. my god, look at the millennial problems. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. But <laughs> you uh, you wanted to talk about chick flicks? I think. Oh, chick I flicks. Mean, okay. Yes. <laughs> there's one. We talked about this earlier, and there's one that he thinks should be a guilty pleasure, and I think it is a genuinely quality it, movie. It's so good, but. All okay, right. Okay, okay, but Ridley Scott produced it, so I think that <laughs> he, ups it he also produced I, a per movie. I will per arbitrate. Prometheus was a beautiful film. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, but most people don't. Whoa. No, the plot was terrible, but it was very There's a guilty pleasure for you. <laughs> there you I go. I know, the Alien series, oof. I mean, I just, Okay, I the honestly, first two are very oh. good. Yes, the those are two. classics. Are very good, but what is this chick flick? Tell me. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> sorry. So um, <laughs> back to that. It's called In Her Shoes, and okay, yes, yeah. You know, it's got Cameron Diaz Cameron and Diaz. Tony Collette. Oh, Tony, Tony Collette. She um, is a dream. She is right? a dream. It's so lovely, and it's like they're 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 sisters, but they have they're yeah. totally different, as as happens occasionally. Um, <laughs> I believe I've seen it once. Oh, oh okay. There we go. I have. At least one copy. I watched it, I think, about three weeks ago. I, I was the most recent. I watch it frequently. <laughs> it's also on HBO yeah. right now, I think. I want to say. Oh, interesting. I know it's on Netflix, because that's how I watched it. Oh, Netflix. There we go. Netflix. Netflix. There you go. Um, but it's also, like, an intro to poetry movie. Oh, it definitely <laughs> is, because they're reading, like... Um, they're reading E.E. E. Cummings. E.E. E. Cummings. They're reading Cummings. my yeah. favorite Elizabeth Bishop poem. Well, I cry <laughs> every time. In every poem Cameron Diaz reads in this movie will make you fall. Well, but it's also... I carry my heart. I yeah. carry it in your heart. Well, in the way in which she is reading them in the scenario, it just... I cry. If you don't read that at my wedding... Alex, you're ruining the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> obviously planning on doing it because we'll know about that. <laughs> We've seen this movie together too many times. Too many times. It was our movie. Apart from... What was our other favorite? Um, Love and Other Disasters. Oh, Love and Other Disasters. That's a good one. With Brittany Murphy. <laughs> it's... Oh, Brittany. That... Everyone I must her. watch. I do too. She was such because a Because she's basically, what's it a rip off? It's of? a rip off of um, Hollywood Lightly. Um, Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's like, oh, the is whole it? Thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, and it's like a movie that's aware of itself because, of like, it's I like guess. It's like a movie that's being written as you watch it. Yeah. And so it's a little cheesy, Interesting. but. Interesting. Yeah, she's like that's this. That's the one I physically do own two copies of. Yeah, I think one of which. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'd like it back, please. No. Um, but what, yeah, what can we talk about uh, chick flicks and, like, why we sort of think of them as guilty people? Well, for me personally, so this is just, I think, totally me. Um, <laughs> I can be a bit of a movie snob, even though I do like terrible movies. And the acting in some of these movies... These chick flicks, especially like I watched what was that Mother's Day? I watched that one most recently because yeah. I just needed a chick flick, and it's terrible. You know, like it looked they're not really they're, bad. It was really bad. I mean, <laughs> that one I'm, is that one is the diet perish to ten. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Extra oh. diet, like calorie free. <laughs> And off brand. Oh. Yes, off brand. Oh, there we go. Not even Kirkland, like, not, like Albertsons. Albert, yeah, not even Kroger, not even we're just Shasta. bottom shelf. Shasta. Oh my goodness. But yeah, so for that I watch them and I'm like, I know it's not a quality movie, but there are certain emotions that they get out of me somehow, even though the acting's terrible and like the stories that, Oh, and you don't you know, think you're hooked and then And then you are. It's just immediate. You're like <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You just, and there's always something like they're so good at, uh, like, yeah, you know, so P. many. Yes, I people. love you. I P. actually yes, I love it. you. I haven't seen it all the way uh, through, but I know people absolutely. Yeah, my mom's movie. obsessed with it. She I watches it all the time. Saw I, it. I saw it in the theater with my mom, and we both spent the entire duration of the film weeping oh. in the theater. Like, yes. the moment that we felt we could pull ourselves together, we immediately began crying about something else. Like, the movie is timed out specifically so that as soon as you're done crying, yeah. you will start we crying start about again. something else. Oh, like, that's masterful. <laughs> we wept the entire time. Oh, my goodness. It's Jared oh. Butler, man. Oh yeah, you can't. 
He's just I love, too. Oh, I love. I know it's amazing what those movies can do to you, like, and especially you have to really be watching the whole thing because, mm-hmm. like, the well, some of them, honestly, the Notebook. I think I've seen <laughs> that one gets me every single time at the end. You know, like, spoiler alert, when they're just like lying in bed together, and you, it, it just kills me. And so I'll walk in, and somebody will be watching the ending, and I start crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's your trigger. It's, yeah, I just it's so good. I just know. And that one, Nicholas Sparks, okay, there we go. That's a huge guilty pleasure because, I mean, <laughs> they are the same plot. They're all in, like, North Carolina. And <laughs> it's just beach. on the beach <laughs> with a bunch of white people. And, like, somebody's going to die. And maybe... <laughs> disease. Like, disease, yeah, exactly. And there's, like, a love story. And you're just... They're oh, all the like same. The one, what, That's Zac that Efron. Efron. <laughs> Taylor Schilling. She, who nobody knew at the time. <laughs> now we all have a bad taste in our mouth. I know. Of her from Orange oh is the New gosh, Black. Yes. I have said that Orange is the New Black could be a guilty pleasure to some people. It could too. because when I talk about it, a lot of people are like, do you watch that show? You're right. I, I love it, though. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's so popular, but yeah, it, well, that's it's what's popular, hard. But, but people it's, are so... They have um, very strong opinions very about it. Very strong opinions. Yeah. Yeah. You meet people and they're not just like... Piper. Oh. <laughs> well, it's okay. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think a weird one of mine that I've gotten into, like, super hard lately, and I'm not sure if it's a guilty pleasure. I mean, it's definitely a weird thing. I think a mm-hmm. lot of people would find it really bizarre. Um, is, uh, true crime, especially the podcast My Favorite oh. Murder. Oh, um, the genre of true crime. Okay. Oh, gotcha. yes. I was thinking of, yeah. um, there's True couple, Detective? Yeah, that came to my mind. I, there's a couple shows. I don't watch a lot of, like, Law & Order or anything like that. Yeah. But um, there's um, American Crime, mm-hmm. which is on ABC, I believe. Mm-hmm. And it's so okay. intense. It's on Netflix now. But it's, mm-hmm. like... Well, I think I need to watch it. Uh, yeah, yes. But, you yeah, know, I, I, I started listening to My Favorite Murder um, a mm-hmm. while ago. And I am obsessed i mean mm-hmm. it's a podcast i recommend it to anybody with a strong stomach uh <laughs> Ooh, because okay. basically it's just these uh these two women um karen uh kilgariff and georgia hardstark and they are friends who love the stories of murders and so they each come prepared every episode with the story of a murder or a murderer or you know a serial murder and they just tell the other one about it uh, right. and yeah, so they just take turns podcast cherry right now yeah. so, <laughs> like it's so obsessed welcome with so many different shows. i know i have i mean there's a few like the girls i work with in the lab we all listen to podcasts so i'm like i'm getting there i know like freakonomics and all the big ones but this is oh well, welcome to the fold no my favorite they, murder yeah. is so so good um i mean it's super morbid like it's really <laughs> but like the, yes. they try to be respectful and they're very much about like uh acknowledging the victims and like making sure that it's about cool. you know that it's their story and you don't glorify the murderer oh i love um, that yeah but it's really fascinating definitely morbid a lot of fun so like i've gotten just super hard into like murder <laughs> okay wait no i'm actually really glad that you brought that up because when i was younger um that was totally something i was embarrassed of like i a good example so freshman year of high school we had to do a book report yeah um, everybody did like, I don't know, books like Speak and all these cute books about teenage. Well, that's not a cute. Not book. cute. <laughs> it's not a cute book. Sorry, that's not a good example. But you know, they would do no. books about like love stories and you know, yeah, typical yeah, YA teenage books. books yeah. right? and... Exactly. And so I did In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because it was fascinating, and I love that stuff. Like I read Helter Skelter when. <laughs> like 17 oh, man. I was just this weird okay. kid obsessed with murder stories and I I didn't really share it with people because I thought they think I was insane Dude, <laughs> you know? need to check out my favorite murder yes it sounds like it. <laughs> it's really good it's really yeah. really good I mean and they're just so funny um because they're they're both comedians um and they're just these really oh. hilarious sort of ditzy girls and so it really tempers the sort of icky somber tone of the whole thing because they're oh, both like it. oh my god jesus christ like you know <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, 
yeah, they say all kinds of funny, funny stuff. They're oh, they're right. really fun. Uh, so it's know, it strikes a really good balance there in tone, uh, and they're cool people. So yeah, for sure, that's a all podcast things, recommendation yeah. and a guilty pleasure. Like I don't want to call it a guilty uh, pleasure because it's like no, I support what they do and it's super duper cool and I'm a big fan. But yeah, yeah it's kind of weird. Like it's weird. But because murder, like <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird thing to be into. Yeah, I understand completely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, yeah. I have another genre of uh, guilty pleasure. Oh yeah. Um, Competition reality shows. Oh. Oh yes. my god. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we've got... <laughs> Which ones are you all off, about? Face Off on Sci-Fi. Where uh, they do... Um, that's uh, the makeup one. Movie makeup. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, but that one's super cool. So good. <laughs> um, another similar one is Skin Wars, <laughs> which RuPaul is a judge on. It's also... I don't, it might still be on Netflix. <clears throat> Face Off is not. Um, uh, Project Runway. <laughs> Of course. A classic. Uh, in the past, very much so, Top Model. Mm. Mm-hmm. That was the thing. That one I that one never was, watched was, because I thought it would be stupid, oh, but then the photography it, parts the, and like. It's so interesting and beautiful. Yeah, and it's then gorgeous. there's like a little bit of drama. Yeah, but it's got <laughs> a little dash of drama. <laughs> although, although in the newer seasons when they did the men and the women, those were mostly drama. And yeah, boys in the house. Boy, boys in the house. <laughs> yeah, that always <laughs> always mixes things up a little bit. But I, I've I've probably seen every season. Thanks. Nice. Which, you know, I'm I would that one's definitely a guilty pleasure because especially you know, as a man. Yeah. You're not supposed to like mm-hmm. that, you know. Yeah. I love it though. <laughs> I'm very fond of the Great British Baking Show. <gasps> we watched For one sure. episode together, and it changed my life. <laughs> Like, it makes you so They're all so, so hu- cute. I, I, I right? binged that it's, show, it's and then I had to go food. and buy a cake mix and make cupcakes, because I, I <laughs> yes. had to do it. You have to do it. You can't. No. You're like, after it's just so positive. I need it. Well, yeah, and they're all they're yeah, so When you nice. lose, you're not like, they're not like, oh, get out of the and, like, You know, they all talk, and they're supportive, and... They help each other out. They're like, hey, they I've got some extra time. Is there anything I can do for you? Mm-hmm. Like, they don't want to drag each other down. They're yeah. all very supportive and helpful to each other. And that's it's, so it's nice. Like, like, I love Chopped, but it is cutthroat. Well, like, can you imagine Mary Berry being a bitch? Like, no. somebody <laughs> with that name. Mary Berry. <laughs> Mary Berry. Fair enough. She's so cute. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that one. I got to say, though, I got to go OG with this one. Oh, I... Yes. Love BattleBots. <laughs> Do you guys That's remember really BattleBots? That is That's really a game cut. I know, I know, I know, right? I uh, loved it. That was good. Yeah, a while back, I was like, "Oh yeah, BattleBots is a thing." And Will and I went on YouTube and we watched a bunch of old BattleBots, and it's so rad! Like it's the <laughs> coolest thing ever. It got really lame though once people realized that the way to win is just to make a flipper arm. It's yeah. like, no, make the big saw, make the flamethrower. Like, yeah, those things don't work, but that's fun to watch. Just flip yeah, exactly. the other bot over. Like, yeah, you win, but at what cost? It's right. So, <laughs> it's, it's not fun to watch. Got, Where is the entertainment? What was the quote from that clip we were watching earlier? It's like, it's got height, it's got drama. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Everything you need. <laughs> I think they yeah. brought it back for a short amount of time. They did. It did yeah, that uh, sounds... last yeah, just sad. Very yeah. unfortunate. It didn't last. Like yeah, many really things in the nineties, it, it came and it left. The nineties was a very although the, yeah, it would seem it's coming back, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Well, Alan's yeah, back I, I really in, like in, in the United States after basically a year abroad. And so today mm-hmm. while we were out just hanging out and shopping, I was showing her all of the new 90s trends. But it was crazy because oh, okay. it's like, yeah, you see all the 90s things, but then we went to the sunglass area and it was like stuff out of Star Wars. So I've got like 90s and then future. <laughs> and it was like, it was like that episode of Spongebob, you know, with like Squidward where he's like, future. Like, that was me. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's gotta be bizarre. Like I hadn't thought of that. So oh man, because yeah, Will and I are planning on going out of the country next year for Ooh. for a year. Um, we we're planning on going to teach in Japan. Oh cool! And uh, so I hadn't even thought about that like scenario of being yeah, like 
it, it's out weird. of touch with American culture. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think about it, well, but I just luckily Allie had me. Yeah, I made a playlist. Oh, a delightful playlist. It was beautiful. <laughs> music. Very and well I, curated. And I, and I gave her a meme download. Yes, <laughs> reclaiming my time. <laughs> so many good ones. But that's the thing. I'm not no. good at keeping up with it, especially when I'm like trying. You you try to immerse yourself in the culture that you're within. So I mean, everything's been Chilean for so long, which I love. Um, but you know, I'd come back here and I didn't know what a, a fidget spinner was. <laughs> like they had to describe oh, everything. Oh man! <laughs> yeah. that's I miss so many little things. Yeah. You're, you're, you're both not missing out on anything and missing out on everything. I know it's right. It's like nothing's <laughs> super important, but at the same time. <laughs> everything is different yeah yeah okay so that kind of that brings me to another idea of like the sort of weird internet stuff guilty pleasure because oh. like oh. okay i found this thing <clears throat> will show me this thing the other day that is the craziest um <laughs> this guy i i don't know if he's he might be brazilian he might be mexican i'm not entirely sure he calls himself le tongue and he is this like old fat Latino man who sings English language songs but doesn't speak English? Oh yeah. Uh, and he That's does this really like very cool. ironically. Like it's so- supposed to be very funny because he yeah. makes these really dorky, hilarious music videos to go along with it. Oh, where he's like wonderful. dancing around and being all crazy, and it's all like you know alien dancing gifs like edited <laughs> in. Like it's all very self aware and funny on purpose. Oh, but okay. he cannot speak English, and so he's like singing. Um, I don't know, like Justin Bieber and uh, System of a Down and like just oh everything. God. Yes. <laughs> and it's and it's really really funny. Like just look up Tongo and then like a, th- a bunch of songs will come. It's the funniest thing. It's super duper weird. Like it's super <laughs> weird. So like for someone like me, I see it and I'm like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. But yeah. like you show somebody else and they're gonna be like, this is atrocious and crazy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you showing me this? Um, what is this? What am I looking at? For strangeness of the internet, <clears throat> I was the only person that I knew that ventured onto Vine. Mm-hmm. And I would just show everybody everything I found. Which I loved, absolutely. I'm just all the know. weird Vines. Yes. <laughs> and I miss it so much. I know. It would, like, be the perfect way to decompress from a day. Just to, like, <gasps> cackle at these what? strange six seconds exactly. of, of film. Yeah, <laughs> I miss Vine. I miss Vine. That was a good time. Most of the Viners have gone to YouTube, but it's not the same. No, it's really No. <laughs> you can't... It, a Vine star and a YouTube star are like a different breed of people. Once you cross over, it's different. It's not the well, same. Well, th- there's something about that amount of time. I don't yeah, know. the like, constraint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's, yeah, the constraint makes people more creative. It helps. Yeah, exactly. Whereas YouTube, it's like, there's no constraints anymore other than... Not cursing if you want to get monetized. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and even then. And even then. And that's not very that's funny. Like, yeah. I mean. <laughs> that's not very funny. Uh, Doesn't have quite the ring to it. Um, oh, now I'm thinking of like all those great vines, like the inflatable cow dancing and the inflatable T-Rexes. Oh, like, oh no. Oh, that's the my absolute favorite was the one where he's like, that's a T-Rex. And then it's the <laughs> girl in the costume and she's like running in the music from Jurassic Park. Like, da, da, da. I don't know. <laughs> Glorious. <laughs> Yeah, Ooh. yeah. There's some weird <clears throat> stuff on the internet for sure. <laughs> yeah, my mine is not very recent. It was definitely I'm gonna say freshman year of high school. But David Firth, um, he was this British guy. I, I can't remember if we found out if this was true or not, but I'm pretty sure he would do a lot of drugs and make these little animated cartoons. So he did Salad Fingers. I don't know if you guys have heard of that Oh, one. God, yeah. Salad Fingers. He's the Salad Fingers guy. Okay. Yeah. No, I know yeah, what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, no, so that's like his most popular one, but then he did a ton yeah. of other ones, and they are the weirdest yeah. things I've ever seen, but I was obsessed with them. Like, we would all sit around, and it was like a group of four or five of us, and we'd just watch them and just be completely weirded out, but we couldn't stop, and I loved it. And I tell people now about Salad Fingers, and they're like, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> How did they miss Salad Fingers? They were Like, not. I thought everybody watched Salad Fingers in middle school. I thought so, too, but apparently they just weren't living life as they should have lived. Well, because I remember Salad Fingers being a kind of a thing, sort of like in elementary school with, like, Warheads candy. It's like, I dare you to do this. Yeah. Like, I dare you, yeah. you know, you dare kids to eat the Warhead. You dare You're somebody to watch Salad yeah. Fingers. Like, That's exactly are how you I brave enough? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Even even deeper but, and further back in time, it makes me think of like E Bomb's world. Yeah, all that stuff. All those oh, man. Were, like, I guess those were like pre memes. Yeah. Oh yeah, that there was yeah, the sort of proto meme like proto weird meme. I just I was recently reminded okay, did you guys ever watch the web cartoon Blockhead? No. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. He was like a little, he was like a yellow smiley face guy. Um, and he the, the whole conceit was that he was just like really idiotic. And then there was this old man in an armchair in his head that was like his conscience or something. I don't know. But basically like he would just be an idiot. And then his like conscience man was like very frustrated with him. And, like <laughs> want to die. Uh, and that was basically <laughs> the series. It was like a 10 nice. episode series. Nice. Uh, but I, I, it came back to me because like, there's just this line from it that always stuck in my head for some reason. Um, there's like the like, tongs are a running gag in it. Like there's just advertisements for tongs and like there's just tongs at the store. And so I don't know. It's just the <laughs> early internet stuff. But yeah. uh, it's just early web cartoons. But there's this line. There's like a commercial and there's this old woman voice that says, I use tongs to cook my meals. And. <laughs> <laughs> my brother was taking some tongs out of the dishwasher and I just said that and then we were both like whoa where did that come from and I was like what was that even from and we had to like sort out where that yes. line even came from I love it when moments like that happen like like the first time I remembered bananas in pajamas you know since like oh, the 90s I was like yeah. why do I have that image in my head bananas in pajamas it makes me think of like um so I at work, we only get like really weird shows on our TV in the break room, like the station Laff, <laughs> L-A-F-F. It only plays three <laughs> shows. In the mornings, it's Drew Carey. Oh, in okay. the evenings, oh, as in the it's sitcom, the Drew Carey show. Yes. Yes. In the evenings, it's Night Court. Night Court. <laughs> night court. <laughs> and then in the late evenings, it's um, Roseanne. Oh yes. What? Those are the what? only that shows it plays my... all day, every day bizarre it's so strange but i was i, I don't know where i was going with this anymore. <laughs> were you enjoying it you feel bad about it <laughs> well drew carey is definitely like i loved it when oh it first i came did out. too it's loved so it. strange like yeah. the episode last night was like an eagle flies into his house and like makes roosts there and so like they can't get it out because it's what? protected now because the eagle's there <laughs> Oh. And then I'm remembering Mimi, the oh. villain at his office. Yeah. She's well, amazing. it's crazy to me that Icon. that Craig she's Ferguson Icon. was on that show. Right, and oh, he was such a right. small part on it too. Oh, He's not even yeah. in most episodes. And then Ryan Styles. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, Ryan Styles. Styles. Man, I got to I got to see him in person up in Bellingham. Did you guys ever see him? I never got to see him, but I actually I met him a couple times because I um I used to work at Woods Coffee. Oh. And yeah, and so I work at the one in the Hagen store and then the one at Boulevard Park. And those are like really Oh, busy. I love the Boulevard Park one. Oh, I know, right? It's beautiful. Um, and I didn't recognize him at first because, I mean, you know, he looks pretty normal and he like wears a hat and he would always get this like the, the largest decaf latte. And I like <laughs> bent over to get a cup and then it clicked and I was like, oh shit, that's Ryan Styles. <laughs> and I like looked up at him and he's just like, you need to tell her who else you met. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I don't watch the show, but I still freaked out. Um, I've seen a few episodes, and so I understand who he is. Um, so one day, we're sitting there, and I'm on the coffee bar, which is like right next to the register, and I'm making mochas or what have you. And I look up, and this guy looks abnormally handsome. Like, you know, like. I know after- what you're gonna say! Are you? <laughs> what are you gonna say? I yes. knew it! You saw Joan Barrowman! Oh no! I oh, wish. No, no, no. Oh, I actually. Would oh, have you died. did it? No, because oh, he I, I was walked, around oh. all the time. <gasps> he was at what? How did I not know? He shops. Oh. He shops at the Bellingham Target. I worked at the Bellingham Target. Oh, I would How have did I not died. I was a huge Torchwood fan. <gasps> yeah, no, because he because he lives in Canada, right? He lives in Vancouver, and sometimes uh, he comes down he to Washington to shop at Target. He was probably buying. Uh, no, who did you see then? No, okay, so. 
Who did you see? Who, who is I saw, Who's another abnormally handsome man? <laughs> <laughs> well, he just like looks like an actor. You know, he kind of had that vibe to him. And yeah. you know, we take the names for the cups, and I was like, oh my god, that's Misha Collins. And he, she's like, what's your what? name? And he, yeah. <laughs> and he said Misha, and I was like, somebody's either messing with me or that's actually Misha Collins. And it was. It was. We talked to Freaking him, and then it became. What? Yeah, and they became regulars. Him and his wife are like the coolest people, and they were trying to find a house in Bellingham, so they came in every week. We were on like a name basis with them. It was so great. I can't believe that. That's so <laughs> good. Right? I know. And, oh, the, it was so frustrating because none of my coworkers knew who he was. So I thought what? I was crazy, and I was running around. I was like, is that Misha Collins? And they were like, what? Who? Yeah, and luckily my friend was sitting out in the like lobby area and I peeked over and I was like, Did you see that? And he's like, Yes. That was not a dream. And he's and I go out there and I scream at him and then he's like, I'm sitting next to his wife and I like look over and she's just laughing because I've been having this just like deep moment. <laughs> just dying because it's Misha Collins. Oh my god. No, he uh, seems like a super cool guy. He's yeah, he's interesting. He's like a he's very reserved, but he's pretty chill. I love his wife. You would honestly. be Honestly, I can imagine he would have to be reserved because it's like he's that he's in the sort of show where like the fans are often very rabid, Great. and so he's got to like guard <laughs> himself. I know. I like I imagine, imagine that. Like it's kind of a learned mask. behavior. To, <laughs> no, exactly. I'm sure little... he's just ready for it. You know, he's waiting for people like myself um, to he just like. Well, you're not even a fan Count. of the show. And I'm not even. I know I'm not even that rabid of a fan, but he's the most famous person I've ever met. Yeah. So I just like almost man, passed out. <laughs> speaking of guilty pleasures, Supernatural, man. <laughs> okay, but it's a good show. That one for a while. The episodes it I have was seen, a good well, show in the past. It was a good show. Yeah, no, it it uh oh, no. it got not as good. That's another one that I just sort of petered out on. Is it still going? Still going for real? Yeah. yeah. See, and that's not a good sign. That's not. It shouldn't be. No. Like better, better to have the <laughs> second season or the first season not even complete, like um, uh, Firefly, than to you oh, know Firefly. be like. I've come to terms with Firefly. That. I believe that it is what it is because well, it's, it's it lasted died so longer young. because it died so Well, young. that's yeah. the thing. Whereas at some it, point, it's supernatural. It's going to be forgotten about because it's, exactly. it's just going to be written to death. Oh my gosh, they're killing itself slowly. There's yeah. a movie about this very thing. Um, speaking of things, <laughs> it's called what is it called? It's like um, frequently asked questions about time travel. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I've never met anybody else who's seen it. I only watched it because it's got um, what's his face in it. Um, Lenny Hill. Basically, the plot is, like, there's this group of people in the future who go back in time and kill people before they ruin their fame. So, like, <laughs> an example, they would have come back and, like, killed the writers of Firefly to stop it before it gets bad. And so, like, the main characters in the movie write this book. And, or, maybe it's a song. I can't remember. It's been a minute. But, you know, so, like, they write this thing and it's, like, their masterpiece. And so the group comes it back in time to kill them before they can ruin it. <laughs> And it's really good. They just get like stuck in this weird like time travel problem. And it's got it's got the Irish cop from Bridesmaids in it. Um, <laughs> and I love him. I can't remember. You know the guy from the IT crowd. Ah. Chris O'Donnell. Chris O'Donnell. Chris O'Dowell. Chris O'Dowell. Chris O'Dowell. Chris O'Dowell. Chris O'Dowell. There we go. Yeah. We made it. Good job, team. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. But anywho, that's a random offshoot. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Like, just stop. <laughs> you got a good thing. You got to cut it off. And yeah. unfortunately, that happened. Like once upon a time. Oh, yes. Should have been stopped a little earlier, I think. <laughs> the, the, the writers are just, please stop us. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, please. Please stop kill us. Yeah. Kill us. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> well, on that note, it may be time to wrap up. I think so. I'm sure we could talk. We could long, never end but... this, but <laughs> yeah, just yeah. I, I feel like we've sort of sufficiently aired out the closets and you yeah. know shown Let's the world right. our true faces. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we can oh, yes. we can talk with impunity about whatever we want because we told everybody all of our embarrassing stuff. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're just. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Okay. Yeah, because, like, I mean, but for real, though, because, like, I, you know, I, we call these guilty pleasures, but, like, I got no shame about this stuff. Like, other people might think I'm weird for liking whatever, but I'm happy with the stuff I like, and I don't, you know. 
Same. I mean, no it took guilty me, pleasures. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it took me until I was, what, like 22 to start really not caring. But well, I, I, think, I, I, think it's, it's, I think it's partially growing up and like realizing that you're not entirely whatever society says you have well, to be. Well, right, exactly. And you realize that other people have opinions and that's okay. And <laughs> you like what you like. Even if it's stupid, and that's okay. Yeah, and if it makes you happy, then why feel bad about it? Like, life's too, it's cliche, but life's too friggin' short. Like, just yeah. like what you like as long as it's not hurting anybody and you're good. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. kind of yeah, definitely, definitely. Though, I, I, I gotta say, it definitely has helped growing up um, in a time now where, like, nerdy stuff is cool. That's a thing. Like, I know. I love it that nerds got popular because that was... Yeah, that's but what even is there too? Yeah, yeah, but now they're too powerful. That's true. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, they, they need we to learn the lesson it. from Spider-Man. They, they have to yeah. learn the lesson from Spider-Man. With so. great power comes from exactly. <laughs> Great response. Like, come on, nerds. This is this is your own people talking. You need to listen. Yeah. Listen to them, please. <laughs> listen, listen to Sam Raimi. <laughs> okay. That's enough of that. I think I think it's time to say <laughs> goodbye. Adieu. That does it for today's episode. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us. And like us if you just kind of like us. Also follow us on Twitter at LitMeritPod. And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember... No, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures.